Welcome to Grace and Truth for today. This is Pastor Pete. I'm your host, and thanks again for uh, tuning in. Uh, it is uh, Friday, and uh, we certainly always look forward to the weekend. Hope that your week has gone well, and I trust that uh, the weekend will find you uh, in God's house uh, this coming uh, Sunday. Looking forward to a great day at the Cleveland Baptist Church as we celebrate 62 years of ministry here in Northeast Ohio. It's on the second Sunday of August of 1958 that the Cleveland Baptist Church was founded, and so we always commemorate uh, that the second Sunday of August each and every year. I'll be preaching in the uh, morning services at 8, 9, 30, and 11, and then uh, my dad, our pastor emeritus, will be preaching at 6 o'clock p.m. on Sunday night. Hope that you'll uh, carve some time out of your schedule to join us on that very special day. Uh, we are, uh, again, back in the uh, book of Genesis in the 40th chapter, and we're continuing to walk through the life of Joseph. Of course, Joseph is in prison. And the Bible says in verse number 1 of chapter 40, And it came to pass after these things that the butler of the king of Egypt and his baker had offended their lord, the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was wroth against two of his officers, against the chief of the butlers and against the chief of the bakers. And he put them in ward in the house of the captain of the guard into the prison the place where Joseph was bound. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them, and he served them, and they continued a season in ward. Well, we, we never know just who we're going to meet on any given day, do we? Now, here is Joseph in prison, and uh, life is, is carrying on as normal. And one day, two very unexpected guests uh, are thrown into the very same prison where Joseph is. Uh, these aren't just your average ordinary criminals in the nation of Egypt. Uh, no, these men are high-ranking men of authority, of power, and influence. One is the chief of the butlers, uh, Pharaoh's chief servant. The other is the chief of the bakers, Pharaoh's chief chef. And, and one day the prison doors are opened and in these men uh, are placed. And um, we don't know all of the circumstances as to why these men were there, but somehow these men had offended the king, and he reacts by throwing them into prison. And Joseph's leadership in prison brings them into contact with him, where the Bible tells us in verse number four that he served them. You know, most of us think of leadership as being served, don't we? Uh, we think that uh, the person who is leading is the guy who sits back and others serve him. But the Bible definition of leadership uh, is really the idea of servant leadership. Uh, I'm reading from the Gospel of Matthew in the 23rd chapter where Jesus is speaking and he tells his disciples this. He says in verse number 10, neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. So again, a reminder that biblical leadership is not being served, but rather biblical leadership is serving. And so Joseph has this position in, pri in prison. Uh, the keeper of the guard commits everything into Joseph's hand. And we might think, well, that made life a whole lot easier for Joseph in prison. I'm not necessarily sure that it did. I think it just added to Joseph's workload and uh, the effort that he put out, but it was certainly worth it as it put him into contact with the chief butler and the chief baker. And I want to I want to look at three ways in which Joseph served these men. The Bible says in verse number four, he served them. We might ask ourselves the question, well, how? Well, I'm sure there were the day-to-day -day acts of service that Joseph bestowed upon them, perhaps bringing them their meals, cleaning up after them making sure they were well taken care of, at least to the best of his ability, with the resources that he had available to him. Uh, but I want to take it a step further. I, I think Joseph did beyond what was his duty to do towards them. And he served them in these three ways. Let me share them with you. First of all, Joseph actively took an interest in their lives. He took an interest in their lives. The Bible says in verse number 6, And Joseph came in unto them in the morning and looked upon them, and behold, they were sad. And he asked Pharaoh's officers that were with him in the ward of his Lord's house, saying, Wherefore look ye so sadly today? Well, the Bible says that one day while serving them, Joseph noticed they, they both looked sad. 
I would imagine most look pretty sad in prison, don't you think? But this seems to be different, doesn't it? Joseph was perceptive enough to pick up on, on something different. These, these guys seem troubled about something. You know, he did not just do his duty with these men and move on, but he, he actively took a personal interest in their, in their mood and in their outlook. He, he could tell as he looked upon their countenance that something was troubling them, something was bothering them. Can I encourage you and can I encourage me, all of us, that we take the time to get to know the people that God places in our lives? Now be, be willing to ask maybe some hard questions from time to time if things don't seem quite right. Now my wife is this type of a person. She'll see something that isn't right or is out of place and she'll inquire about it. And sometimes I'm sitting here saying, don't rock the boat. Let's just you know, let's just not make things awkward, and yet she cares enough about people to uh, to to interact with them and, and to dig sometimes when things don't appear to be as they should be. And that's what I call taking an active interest in the lives of people. And so again, the next time that you pass someone that you know, and perhaps they look a little troubled or something doesn't look quite right, why don't you take a moment and show some Christian love and compassion and and just ask them, inquire of them, is everything okay? Is there something that I can pray with you about? Uh, something seems to be bothering you. I, I know that may cause us to step outside of our comfort zone, but that's a way that we can serve folks. Maybe that folks are just looking for someone who they can confide in, someone who they can talk to. And so we see that Joseph took an interest in their lives. But notice, not only that, but he involved himself in their lives. You know, the Bible says in verse number 8, and they said unto him, We have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me them, I pray you. When these men explained why they were so sad, Joseph could very easily have excused himself, you know, said, I'm sorry, that's too bad. I, I hate that for you guys. But, but instead, he, he dug deeper, didn't he? And he asked them to, to tell him what they what it was that they had dreamed. He involved himself in, in their lives. He acknowledged something, didn't he? He acknowledged that any interpretation would come from God, but that he perhaps could be the conduit through which the interpretation were to flow. You know, any involvement that we have in the lives of the lost should certainly feature God's truth flowing through us. Now, I, I, think of my, I think to myself that I serve folks best when I when I share God's truth with them over my opinions. You know, they could have shared their dreams with him, and, and he could have just said, well, that's an interesting dream. Maybe he could have given some opinions. Here's what I think it means. But instead, he let off this interaction. He said to them that, that listen, interpretations of dreams, that belongs to God alone. And uh, when, when God communicated the truth to them, uh, to him through through uh, to to them through Joseph, the Bible is clear that uh, Joseph was quick to give them uh, the truth that had come, and that really brings us to the final point. How did he serve these men? He did so by taking an interest in their lives, by involving himself in their lives. But finally, notice he told them the truth, even if it wasn't pleasant. In verse number twelve, the Bible says, "And Joseph said unto him, This is the interpretation of it. This is the dream that the butler had dreamed." And the interpretation was a, is a pleasant one. It was a fair one. And Joseph says, three days from now, you're going to be removed from prison. You're going to be restored back to your position. And you're going to once again enjoy the life you once lived. And the Bible tells us that the butler, when he heard the interpretation, he really liked it. And he thought, well, perhaps my, my dream will be interpreted similarly. And he shared his dream with Joseph. And the Bible says in verse number 18, And Joseph answered and said, this is the interpretation thereof. The three baskets are three days. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thy head from off thee and shall hang thee on a tree and the bird shall eat thy flesh from off thee. Now the butler's interpretation was positive. It was pleasant. The baker assumed his would be too, but Joseph was bound. He was bound to proclaim the truth, whether it was pleasant, whether it was positive, or whether it was unpleasant and whether it was negative. Can I say that we too have an obligation to proclaim truth to those that we interact with? Sometimes the truth that we have to share with them is a little tough. You know, there are times in my job, in my ministry, my life, 
in which I have to sit someone down and I have to level with them. I have to share some things with them that perhaps are not necessarily things that they want to hear. Uh, but I have an obligation to do that. Uh, I am serving them in that way. Perhaps if they'll listen to the message that I have to share and, and they'll take it like a like a dose of medicine that may taste somewhat bitter, but in the long run it can make life sweet. And so Joseph served these men. Who are you serving today? We can serve by taking an interest in the lives of people. We can serve by not just taking an interest, but once we've discerned what they're struggling with or what ways that we can help them, we can serve them by involving ourselves in their lives. And then finally, we can serve them by telling them the truth, no matter uh, no matter whether it's pleasant or whether it's unpleasant, positive or negative, Joseph served these men, and he leaves a great example. Each of us are to serve. The Bible tells us that Jesus came not to be ministered unto, but to minister. Well, if you and I are Christians, and that means we're disciples of Christ, we're learners, we're to follow his example, and may God help us to do so by serving those that God brings into our path today and every day. Father, thank you again for this day. Now, Lord, it's a new day. It's a fresh day. Help us, Lord, to serve you faithfully and to serve others as we, have, as we are given opportunity. Uh, Lord, help us to go above and beyond. The Bible talks about second mile, walking the second mile, going extra, and I think that certainly is fitting of the Christian life and what God has called us to do. And so help us to be faithful to do so. Now, Lord, would you bless those who are listening to this, who are, um, Lord, involved in following along in this podcast. We pray that it would be a help to them and that they would implement the things that have been taught, the things that we discover here in your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hey, listen, it's Friday. Why don't you go find someone that you can serve today? Uh, that's certainly living life the way that God intended to be lived. Thanks so much for tuning in to Grace and Truth for today. God bless you. Have a great day.